Welcome to the SCP Foundation. I am 05-4 and today you are going to be briefed on SCP-041. This is a uh, an interesting one, so let's go ahead and begin. Item number SCP-041, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-041 is to be hospitalized at Bio Research Area 12. Though not Keter class, should SCP-041's abilities ever propagate beyond a reasonably containable area, the risk of SCP-sensitive information being broadcast to the public remains too great a risk and warrants area-level isolation away from the general populace. SCP personnel wanting to keep their thoughts private are advised to remain outside of a 15-meter radius from SCP-041 beyond the designated red circle on the floor. It is beneficial to the mental health of SCP-041 to have a sitter in the room who watches television and concentrates on its programming. This allows SCP-041 to effectively watch television through the mind of someone else. The optimal sitter is a Class D personnel with below average intelligence whose mind does not wander or have more than one train of thought at a time. Though not mind control, SCP-041 has used its abilities to coerce sitters into watching programming that they don't themselves enjoy. SCP-041's tastes vary between gore and slasher films, having even expressed interest in snuff, and children's programming. Description. SCP-041 is a male human suffering from irreversible damage to his central nervous system, which is believed to have been caused by an infection of a rare strain of bacterial meningitis. Although antibiotics were successful in clearing the infection, the membranes surrounding his brain and spinal cord had reacted to the infection by severing many neurons connecting the central nervous system to the rest of the body. SCP-041 must rely on a respirator to sustain his breathing, a biventricular pacemaker to keep his heart beating, and a nasogastric tube to provide nutrition. Visually, SCP-041 appears to be in a persistent vegetative state. However, observers in the presence of SCP-041 begin to realize that their thoughts, along with everyone else's in about a 10 meter radius from SCP-041, are broadcast in a semi-audible fashion. Aside from being the source, SCP-041 is also capable of broadcasting his own thoughts to those present. Anyone forming an idea using words will have those thoughts unwillingly transmitted to others in this range as mind-audible speech, which cannot be recorded by any known equipment. Uh, there's a correction, uh, addendum 01. We'll look at that in a minute. Mind-audible speech may be heard using whatever voice a subject chooses to think with. Most typically, this is the subject's normal voice. See document 01. Visual thoughts and images are broadcast as well, but are not received as readily. Images are most effectively transmitted when both the sender and receiver have their eyes closed. The sender concentrates on a single object without environment or background and the receiver's mind is clear of conscious thought. Communication between subjects using visual images, particularly those not rooted in memory but in imagination, is usually difficult. The sender typically has trouble conceiving a highly detailed mental object from a single point of view, while the reviewer will often try to fill in gaps of missing information ultimately resulting in the receiver seeing a different image from what was sent. The most difficult imagery to be successfully broadcast appears to be a person's face, particularly if the image is one of a person in motion. Although able to transmit his thoughts to others, SCP-041 is not very talkative. Attempts to persuade SCP-041 to divulge any information about his ability have so far been fruitless. SCP-041 is typically silent and normally will not respond to any direct attempts at communication. However, SCP-041 appears to have a sense of humor as he interjects occasional comments into conversations of others. Addendum 01. While researcher Redacted was taking voice notes using a digital audio recorder, a fellow researcher was changing the television in SCP-041's room. 
While the television was on a channel of static, disembodied voices could be heard filtered through the white noise. Attempts to record mind-audible speech with white noise generators and sound recording equipment have begun to yield modest results, though most audio is garbled and recorded sounds may or may not be voices and are widely left toward individual interpretations. Addendum 02 it has come to my attention that several personnel have used SCP-041 as an ad hoc she likes me, she likes me not detector. This is one of the most appalling things I have ever heard. Are we safeguarding potentially world-destroying objects or are we in third grade? Dr. Klein. Document 01, researchers quote, You know, the first time I was in that room with Kent M41, I kept hearing this singing. It was this little girl's voice singing some kid's song. It wasn't the TV, and it definitely wasn't a radio. It was in our heads, you know? So I think, you know, if I was stuck in bed without anything else to do, I'd sing like a little girl, too. And then this voice comes into my head. Hey, it's not me. I don't know that tune. And then old Ken looks at me, gone all white in the face, you know? Note. This event occurred after SCP-239 was placed in a chemically induced coma, any connection between the two SCPs is currently unconfirmed. And this concludes your briefing on SCP-041. We have every confidence in your capabilities as a researcher, and hopefully you'll be able to research to conclusion uh, the ability to record mind-audible speech. That would be an extremely useful thing for us to know. Remember, we secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they may live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.